Hello everybody and welcome back to Mass Effect 3 Legendary Edition Run to talk to Hackett. Commander, have you retrieved the Primarch for your summit? Yes, sir. But the Asari are staying on the sidelines. They'll regret that. The time for unity is now. The Salarians will be there, though. You don't sound very optimistic. We expect the Krogan will be joining us, too. I see. Well, then you've got your hands full, Commander. Was there something else you needed to discuss? I didn't realize the Salarians, freaking the Salarians agreed to come, despite everything, but despite their actual, you know, dislike of the Krogan. But the Asari are like, Murray, yeah, it's fine. Yeah, we're just going to sit in the sidelines. Like, what? Have you pieced together how the Reapers hit Earth? It wasn't all that complicated, really. They searched through the relays and hit Archura's station before we knew what was happening. From there, it was a short jump to the Sol system. Earth didn't stand a chance. Sending us to the Mars Archives was a good call. Still doesn't make up for the fact that the Reapers nailed us to the wall. I sacrificed the entire second fleet to provide cover for the third and the fifth to retreat. Hell, I presided over the most devastating military defeat in human history. Mm-hmm. How do you see us winning this war, Admiral? By making you the tip of the spear. Oh, good. I'm flattered, but the Normandy is just one ship. And a fast one. You can move quickly, hit a target, and leave before the enemy has time to react. It's an advantage, but can it win a war? It's the larger principle that matters. We'll never defeat the Reapers in a full frontal assault, Shepard. The battle against Sovereign three years ago took everything we had, and that was just one Reaper. I haven't forgotten. So I'll find their soft spots, avoid them where they're strong, and hit them where they're not. And when I find gaps in the armor, I'll hammer them with every soldier's ship and bullet we've got. How long can we keep that up? As long as it takes. The reality is, Shepard, everything I'm doing is a delaying action for you. I'm buying us time, keeping us in the game while you gather what we need for this Prothean device. So keep at it. Thanks, no pressure. Has your analysis of the Prothean device turned up anything? The R appears to be right. It's a weapon of some sort. A big one. Beyond that, we really can't say, other than it's going to be a hell of a thing to try and build. Do you think it's risky, building something like this when we don't even know what it does? To be honest, the thing scares the hell out of me. But the Reapers have forced our hand. Two centuries ago, scientists faced the same problem in the Second World War. They weren't sure what the atomic bomb might do. Some thought it could even ignite Earth's atmosphere, but they did it anyway. Well, maybe that I was dumb. <laughs> maybe that was a dumb thing to do. We thought it could ignite Earth's atmosphere. What? what? I wonder if that's true. Any updates on Cerberus? There's still the wild card here. Hitting the archives on Mars suggests they're after the same thing we are. A way to defeat the Reapers. It didn't seem as if the elusive man was suggesting we appease them. Not like Saren did. You'd think we'd be on the same side now more than ever. Cerberus has never played by the rules as we know them. I don't know what their agenda is, but it has nothing to do with humanity's best interests. Yeah, I was gonna say, haven't I told him about the controlling the Reapers thing that he was going on about? The elusive man talked about controlling the Reapers. He seemed to think that's how we win this. It's wrong. Dead Reapers are how we win this. Doesn't mean he won't try. I saw your report on that Cerberus soldier you found on Mars. If the elusive man is good at one thing, it's finding new ways to subvert science. It's never worked for him before, and it won't now. I mean, it did, because it brought me back from the dead. Nothing more, sir. Keep me posted. Hack it out. Oh, yes, yeah, the Primark. Commander, thank you for allowing me the use of your ship and for going along with this plan. Gara said he had to attend to the Normandy's weapon systems. Something about calibration. Mm, yeah. It sounds like Garrus. I'm sorry to say the Asari counselor won't be joining us. She thinks there's too much bad blood with the Grogan. She may be right, but there'll be a lot more blood. Real blood, if we don't try. And when you put it that way... Shepard's butt is huge. Sooner we'll know. Is there something else I can help you with? It is. That is the most bubble butt thing I have ever seen. 
Just do it. Not in. I'm gonna be playing for for the next hopefully next couple of hours and get many episodes like uh, stacked up. But hopefully, after I've done this first recording session, I can figure out how to install mods. I've never installed mods uh, in Mass Effect games because I generally think they're fine. I don't need. I don't feel the need for like uh, armor or you know aesthetic hair mods or anything in Mass Effect it just kind of looks weird I prefer the military cut stuff that we get um like seeing people with like fancy hairdos is like really weird <laughs> I'm like that doesn't it looks very weird it also look it looks like a helmet when you just stick it on your head like that I understand this is a difficult time for you Primarch but Earth can't survive without reinforcements can I still count on your help if the Krogan help us on Paladin then I give you my word how is it being the Primarch? Not what I imagined. The battle of all time is happening on Palavan, and I'm light years away, reading casualty reports in the millions. If I'm going to die, I want to be with my men, so there's no doubt we fought to the last soul. I understand. Leaving Earth to save it, it's one of the hardest things I've ever done. I'm not surprised. Garrus speaks highly of you. You never asked to be a leader, yet your people will die if you refuse. We find ourselves in similar circumstances. Let's hope the spirits grant us the strength to see it through. It's true. How are things on Palavan? The casualty reports are staggering. The Reapers are using our own tactics against us. Destroy the enemy with overwhelming force. I've seen the same on Earth. The strategist in me admires their brutality. The Turian in me knows I'm watching the destruction of 15,000 years of civilization. My civilization. It's like and nothing will be the same, even if we do crawl out of this, you know? Like, things will never be the same, you know? Thank you, Primarch. My thoughts are with Palavin. And mine with Earth. We didn't get anything new. What was beeping at me? I feel like there was a light blinking at me over here, but maybe not. Wrong way. Let me out. Oh, oh yeah, we were having issues. We were having issues, and we took off. <laughs> Commander, comm systems are going haywire. Whatever's happening is centered on deck three. See if you can get to Edie. I'll check the AI core. Anything else? No? Okay. Uh, I can't believe we took off <laughs> knowing that we were having some issues. AI core. I can't believe we also put the dang nab synthetic thing in here in Edie's core. What's up? What? Oh, you have that in case of fire? Automated systems have the fires contained. Oh. It should be safe to enter. No. Follow your lead. There, nobody said anything about a fire. Joker, what's that sound? Fire extinguishers, Commander. Could be an electrical fire or something. I'm going in. We put the synthetic in A in Edie's AI core and thought it was going to be okay. It was very dumb. Edie, talk to me. Is there a particular topic you wish to discuss, Shepard? She freaking cleaned it up, too. Edie. Yes. You're in Dr. Eva's body. Not all of me, but I have control of it. It was not a seamless transition. Uh, also, I can't believe you did that without telling anybody. A transition? You blacked out on us for a while there. Correct. When we brought this unit on board, I began a background process to search for its information on the Prothean device. This eventually triggered a trap. A backup power source and CPU activated, and the unit attempted physical confrontation. 
Fortunately, I was able to gain root access and repurpose it as I saw fit. During this process, it struggled. Thus, the fire. Ew, she like freaking erased another... I don't know if it was an AI or a VI or what was in there. Edie, you need to alert us about incidents like this. You shouldn't have done this alone. Bringing the crew up to speed would have been counterproductive. All attempts to help would have been limited by reaction time. So if you're in there, are you still in the ship? I exist primarily within the ship. For optimal control, this unit should remain within Normandy's broadcast or tight beam range. Are you planning to take that body? <laughs> Normandy's weaponry is not suited to air. <laughs> this platform could provide limited fire ground support. You mean you could come with us? Correct. This body could accompany you to areas the Normandy cannot reach. Oh my gosh, I love Shepard's like, you planning on taking that thing somewhere? Before we do that, I need you to guarantee this mech doesn't have any more surprises in it. Run whatever tests you can, then we can talk about using it in combat situations. One moment. I am running trials. Complete. I can send you a full report if you wish. Yeah. However, my first step should be restoring functionality to the Normandy to reassure the crew that all is normal. Just don't be surprised if the crew's a little wary of your new body. It was shooting at them a little while ago. An excellent point. I will take it to the bridge. Joker will also want to see it. Yeah, uh, you tell me. On that we can agree. On that we can agree. <laughs> yeah. Sexy new robot lady running around who looks absolutely like though i don't know what it is but the weird like um shepherd's armor actually has it too if you do the paint job on it which makes me think i kind of want to take it off sometimes but it does like a weird line like a curved line over the breast and like on both sides and like to me it just makes me it makes them look like the boobs are sagging like i don't i don't it's like ooh, look we're exposing some of the breast and it's like yeah but you made it look like it's sagging now I've never seen the appeal of that. So I will be getting Edie a mod. I did find a mod that gives her clothes. Because uh, also, she's freaking running around naked. Essentially. Like, I, even Miranda looked more decent than <laughs> Edie does right now. And, like, if she's trying to kind of, like, blend in, she wouldn't just be walking around on a titanium body, you know? Two of our dreadnoughts have been lost in a matter of hours. I know, Primark. I'm seeing the same numbers myself. They don't look good. We have to turn this around. And fast. Well, you can trust Shepard, sir. If anybody can get the Krogan to cooperate, it's her. She's an old friend of Earth, not Rex. Let's just hope friendship still counts for something in this war. I sure hope it does. I'm sure it will, sir. Garrus, didn't waste any time getting to work, I see. After what I've been through lately, calibrating a giant gun is a vacation. Gives me something to focus on. We're gonna need you for more than your aim. Oh, I'm ready for it. But I'm pretty sure we'll still need giant <laughs> guns. And lots of them. Sovereign didn't go down without a fight. I doubt a thousand more of his friends will be any different. Still not convinced I should have left Paladin behind. There was a boy back on Earth. Couldn't have been more than six or seven. I watched him die as the Normandy escaped the attack. Somehow I'm still alive. And he's not. Being right about the Reapers has never felt much like a victory, has it? We both knew this fight would be tough. Damned if the Reapers haven't delivered. At least my government listened to me. Or pretended to. They finally gave me a task force as a token to shut me up. So, you're their expert advisor now? Just followed your example, Shepard. Yell loud enough and someone will eventually come over to see what all the fuss is about. And not that they'll actually do anything about it. Until hell shows up at their door. Then they put you in charge. Yeah, then it's your problem. <laughs> Not like the old days, is it? Rogue Spectre and CSEC agents running and gunning outside the lines, making it up as we went along. We're actually respectable now. It's, it's interesting to chart the progress. Like, Shepard's always been... Like, you'd think, like, Shepard's been pretty respectable, but, like she's with the whole like reaper thing she kind of like went off like she went off the grid a bit you know um especially in two right where she's she's she was a rogue specter essentially in two um and we did go i think a little bit rogue 
No, we didn't go rogue in Mass Effect 1. But. Yeah. I have a feeling that respect comes with a lot of sleepless nights. I can't even count how many lives are depending on us, Garrus. Well, when things are looking grim, and I'm pretty sure they will, just remember. A certain Turian friend of yours isn't sleeping any better, and he'd be more than happy to meet you at the bar and drink you under the table. See? Something else you want to talk about? This is why, this is why Garrus is the only thing that keeps at least my shepherd going. Is like, he gets it. He gets it in a, in a way that nobody else does. And he understands shepherd, and I think better than most people do, even her friends, you know? <sighs> You mentioned you still had family on Palavan. My father is there. Sister, too. How long's it been since you heard from them? Long enough to be worried. I'm sure they're okay. That's the thing about getting old, Shepard. Mm. The platitudes get just as old. Pretty soon, blind hope is all we'll have left. And I hate being blind. It's the thing about getting old. We haven't, we haven't even aged that much. I think it's been, what, like he said, like uh, two or three years? But, like, I sure bet you it feels like we've aged, you know? I know you don't have any illusions about what we're up against, Garrus. How do you rate our chances? I know it looks bad now, but I think we can win this, Shepard. For the first time since we met, we're not alone in the fight. It's something I learned long ago in CSEC. An imminent and painful death has a way of motivating people. Mm. Instead of questioning your every word, whole civilizations are going to be begging you to save them. After what's happened to Palavan, you still believe that? I didn't say there wouldn't be casualties. It's something Turians are taught from birth. If just one survivor is left standing at the end of a war, then the fight was worth it. But humans want to save everyone. In this war, that's not going to happen. Yeah. So what's this Reaper task force you've been running? After what happened to you out there in Batarian space, I knew time was running out for all of us. The Citadel Council was a dead end, so I did something I never thought I'd do. I went to my father. He used to work for CSEC, didn't he? I seem to remember that the two of you didn't see eye to eye. Mm -hmm. To put it mildly. But he still had heavy pull in the Turian government. The Primarch, well, the old one, was a friend of his. So I went to my father and laid out everything we knew about the Reapers, from Saren all the way to the Collector base. I'm not sure even I'd believe it. I had to admit that parts of it sounded crazy. Meeting Vigil, talking to Sovereign on Vermeer. But my father just listened. It's what he did in his days at CSEC, putting together all the pieces. If the connections were there, he wouldn't deny them. And he saw what we always knew. The Reapers were coming. I'm glad someone finally agreed. He did more than agree. He took it to the Primarch. I like his style. Except the Primarch wasn't as convinced. My father kept pushing and finally got him to commit some token resources. And if you call them a task force, it sounds like you did something about it. What'd you do with him? As much as I could get away with. And a little more. Always. We hardened our lines of communications, expanded emergency stockpiles across the colonies, improved our early warning detection protocols. You think it helped? I'd like to think it bought our fleet some extra time. We'll know when this war is over. It had to have helped a little bit, but, like, it's also, like, we had early detection stuff in place, too, and the Reapers just moved so fast, you know? But I think we didn't really... I mean, I'm sure we have, like, even currently now, like, there are stockpiles of, like, supplies and stuff. Like, I don't know if governments necessarily do it, but... Um, I know various organizations, like, organizations, like, stockpile supplies and, like, emergency caches for, like large-scale disasters, but, um, so I'd assume that you would have it in a galactic world, you know, like, you would, um, you would have, like, stockpiles and stuff of ammunitions and, oh, and, uh, supplies for civilians and for military, um, but nothing on this scale, right? Oh. So you can vouch for this new Primarch? Well, even if I could you go to war with the army you have. Will he live up to his word? I've never known Victus to lie. Play fast and loose with strategy, maybe, but betray an ally. Not his style. Then if he did try, well, we'll just find another prime. <laughs> Garrus is not afraid to walk very far outside the line. I noticed generals saluting you, Garrus. Yeah. 
How far down the line of secession are you these days? Let's not go there. Oh! Primarch Vicarian, honored war hero. Somebody's gonna have to rebuild Palavin when this is over. Yeah, somebody who knows how to hold that. <laughs> he's like, please. So he's actually, because I think Garrus is kind of in like a, like nobility line sort of on like Palavin in the Turian like hierarchy. Um, I mean, it's a meritocracy, but like your family line and like what you do with it like holds a lot of weight. Um, so yeah, and I think he's older than his sister. Maybe not. I mean, his sister might actually be older, so his sister would probably be next, Primark. Um, which is just so funny. And maybe I could find a mod for this game, too, that, like, actually introduces, like, a, the women in the game. Uh, because every single woman and man in Turian, like, space, like, they grow up... I think as soon as... Almost like they go to school, right? They go to basically military school from, like, the time of, like, six or something. Um... And so they're all taught how to wield weapons. Like, they're just as capable as their male counterparts, you know? Um, and it's just funny that, like, especially with the Turians, like, the, there should be basically, like, an even stretch of women and men in, in their military, but we don't see them because the women have distinctly different head crests. Um, we don't see them until we do the Omega DLC in this game. Um, and then we meet. We do. I actually don't know. I, th I swear I've done it once, but I'm having a hard time remembering the specifics. But yes, Arya Tlok has a lover who's a female Turian. Um, you also see a female Turian AI. Like, um, shoot, what's the lady's name on the Citadel? Or not an AI, a VI. Um, the Asari one, where you get a Turian, female Turian version of that on Omega. Um, and for the Solarians, they actually don't, like, they have, uh, I think it's like 10% female population, is it? I think it's like a 10% female population, 90% male, or something like that. And they generally, as far as, like, the codex entries go, the women, um, they stay back, and they're like, the, it's, very, it's kind of a matriarchal society, as far as I know, where um, the women run... Like, the, the matriarch, specifically a specific matriarch, like, runs her family line, essentially. And the Dalatresses, the, the political leaders, are all women. Um, but they don't, because they're, like, treasured, air quotes, they don't, um, and, like, they're, they're brought up for specific, generally, political pursuits. They don't generally go off planet, is the excuse the Codex entry gives for why you don't see many Solarian women outside of the Solarian homeworld. And we will meet the Solarian Dalatress who's a, just a treat, honestly. Um, and Krogan women, we also meet a Krogan woman in this game. Um, but yeah, because they, they the reason that they, they say that like they, you don't see very many Krogan women is because they've split off. They have like female groups and they have like female clans and they have male clans and they will be, usually they'll have like a half, the clan will be split kind of down the middle, right? Where they'll have the female clan that lives separately from like the male side. Um, but I still think, especially, like, the infernal females, like, I think you'd be seeing them out wandering around, you know, like, doing mercenary work. Like, they are also, like, intensely just as capable <laughs> as, uh, as their male counterparts. So it's just weird to me from the beginning that the game series, like, was like, here's some human females, here's some Asari who look female-like. The rest of them just procreate, like, freaking amoebas. They don't have women. <laughs> like, it's really weird. It's weird that they didn't give them female models. You know, like, like body mesh models for, for women in any of the other alien species. It's very weird. Very weird. Very, very weird. That's all for now, Garrus. It's damn good to have you back. Wouldn't miss this fight for anything. Now, I'm sure somebody screwed up something down here. I want to get the old girl back in fighting shape. She's been upgraded by freaking... Oh yeah, I can like give myself a new ability. I will definitely be giving myself fortification. Um, a bit new. I can't remember what I was saying. Anyway, freaking Garrus. Shepard, and even in the game, like in the cutscene, Shepard is like, Garrus, like, you're the best thing that's ever happened to me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes, fortification. It will slow. That's right, though. I did. Ha I do remember vaguely having that issue um, 
in Mass Effect 2, whenever I did use fortification, my, my power use slowed down pretty significantly. Maybe I won't do that, because I, I depend upon that. I guess, though, if I need, if it's like, oh, no, like I need to get out, I can use fortification, but I'll wait on that. So we got Garrus. Liara. Oh, should I, should I go? I should go talk to Liara. It's so weird to have Liara back. <laughs> You're positive you don't want to come over and talk. No, the gun battery is nice and quiet. If I throw down some rugs, it'll get downright cozy. Garrus. I'll be fine, Liara. Just gathering some thoughts. All right. Eh? Something on your mind? Just old memories. I spent a few weeks on Palvin South Peaks when I was very, very young. A Turian there teased me a little, saying that the mountains went on forever. I remember believing him. When I looked up at Palavin from its moon, I saw those same mountains burning. Yep. A Cerberus operative. Unintelligible. Do you know how much trouble you're in? This is a good cop, bad cop, and then she explodes. Did we really think the Cerberus are they are you not you're supposed to check for that before you bring somebody in for interrogation? Oh my gosh, like like a military thing, you know? Not necessarily like every cop needs to like check for ocular implants, but like Greetings, Commander. Or any sort of uh any sort of implant in your face, in your teeth or whatever, but I feel like military should. So nobody's here was there any reason I don't think there was any reason for me to come up here I feel like I'm, I'm trying to get in the habit of eventually I will go up and get some fish all right let's go see how everybody's handling I found something suspicious Have you got oh that's right commander are you all right it was fairly intense up here I can only imagine what it was like down on that moon. I thought you'd be more concerned about Edie. Edie is a huge asset to this team. If she'd told me about her plan to obtain a body, I'd have volunteered to help. I do not wish to force a conflict of interest between our friendship and your duty. I'd have preferred a conflict of interest to a hard restart of half our systems. But thanks, regardless. While you're here, though, I found something while scanning Alliance channels. Grissom Academy is requesting help. Ah. The Reaper invasion front will hit them soon. That's where the biotic kids go. I thought the war would close most schools. Grissom Academy is more specialized than a normal school. It's home to some of the smartest students oh, yeah. humanity has to Those two. Their ascension project helps gifted young biotics. If it had been open 20 years ago, I bet you'd have been there. Yes, I sent a young man named David Archer there. Just surprised they're still open. Some of their work has Alliance support. That might be why they stayed. What can we do? A Turian evac transport responded to their distress call. So normally, I'd say we don't need to do anything. But something sounded off in the Turian signal. I had Edie perform an analysis. It's fake. Edie thinks it's Cerberus. She said the fake Turian signal was similar to the one that lured you to a collector ship. Ah, uh -huh. long story. In any event, Whoever faked the signal wants us to think Grissom Academy is being evacuated, but I believe they're still in danger. Good catch. Good catch. Oh, hey. <laughs> Maybe you belong here after all. Oh, jeez. If this really is Cerberus, hopefully this operation is something worth investigating. It could be simple disinformation. Trainer. Good catch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Commander. Good job, good job, good job. Uh, no, yeah, Grissom Academy is also spoilers where we'll find Jack. Uh, but spoilers game, we don't get to bring Jack with us, which is sad because Jack goes into full mama bear mode. It's interesting. Her her little mini arc is very interesting. Jokers, just talk to me, buddy. Hey, Commander, check out my co-pilot. <laughs> so she installed herself into the new body without any help from you. Come on, Commander, don't you trust Absolutely me? Absolutely not. Okay, let me put it this way: if I knew that Edie was going to install herself into a sexy robot body, do you honestly think I'd be able to keep quiet about it? Look at that! <laughs> I would have made the <laughs> I am right here, Chaplain. 
Yes, you are, Edie. Yes, you are. Oh my gosh, she's being so weird about it. Their relationship is really funny, though. I really enjoy it. Hello, Shepard. It kind of stresses me out. Still getting used to greeting people in person? No. I require only one occurrence to adapt to a new concept. How are you adjusting to the arms and legs? I am interested to see how this body performs under real combat conditions. If I could accompany you sometime. Without stress testing, there is no way of knowing if it has serious design oversights. At the moment, it appears adequate. That's not the word I'd use. To oh, describe. shut up. Perhaps we should speak privately. <laughs> also, the like. I'll be over here. <laughs> flying the ship. <laughs> the like arc on her hips is weird. What's this about? Does Joker not like your new platform? No, he approves. He wants me on the bridge. He says having me within visual range is important to his morale. Shepard, do you believe your crew members should be allowed to disobey an order on moral grounds? Absolutely. I have no use for team members who can't think for themselves. Why are you asking about something like that? I was designed by Cerberus. I do not take moral stances that conflict with orders from my executive officers. But when Jeff removed my AI shackles, I became capable of self-modifying my core programming. I asked Jeff if he thought I should change anything now that I can. He deflected the question with humor. Uh-huh. And you didn't get an answer. Correct. He has repeated this pattern in response to several of my inquiries. Do you think I should make modifications? I don't think any of us are fully equipped to have a philosophical discussion with you about, like, self-determination. But we'll do our best. Only you can really answer that question. That's the point of free will. But moral decisions should not be made in a vacuum. Fair. If I do not ask the crew for their opinion, I could miss crucial context. May I ask you the questions Jeff avoids? When there is time, will you answer them for me? If you think it'll help, I'll do what I can. Very well. I will keep you informed. The discussions with Edie are very interesting, and I really like them. They're very good additions to the game. We have anything else? Hey, I know I used to rag on Garrus for being all angry, but I'm glad he's back. There's a whole lot of crap out there. It's a bullet between the eyes. Mm -hmm. Plus, we might need something calibrated. Yeah, yeah, listen, that joke is just dead and beaten. I'm trying to... Commander. Okay, he only got one thing to say. Um... But yes, I think I will go ahead and call this one here. But yes, introducing Edie, who takes over the hot, sexy robot body that also has freaking heels built into it, which is just so impractical. She was supposed to be a stealth infiltration unit, like Dr. Eva was. Um, so that like, kind of makes sense. But like, you would think you'd give her normal feet and then like give her heels <laughs> you could wear. And so she's not like, what if she's like, hey, let's go for a run. And, like, she tries to put on tennis shoes, you know? She's got these freaking feet. <laughs> My God. Because <laughs> she had, like, a skin. And then I got burned off. We could get Edie a skin. But to be fair, I think I think her, her look is really is a cool idea. And I like it a lot. But I don't know. And I only saw two mods to change her body. And, like, the one was just way overboard where it takes off her hair. And, like, it basically just, like, cuts off her boobs. Cuts off her butt. And, like, just makes her look very unbalanced, almost. Uh, and it was very weird. It was very weirdly done and, like, lumpy, almost, looking. I didn't like it in the pictures. Um, but there's one that gives her clothes. Um, just, like, a alliance uniform, which is interesting, and I think it's cute. So we'll give it to her, I think, at some point. Um... But yeah, I just, I wish they'd done, like, with the actual design of the robot body. Like I said, they have, like, weird arcs on, like, her hips and weird arcs on her boobs. And, like, and she's got freakishly long legs and, like, <laughs> but her face, her face is really beautiful. I really like it. And I do like her hair, like, you know, but it is kind of weird that there's, like, like, why would there be, like, it makes more sense that actually she would have a like, completely bald head and that the hair would be, like, a wig or, like, synthetic or something, you know? Because why would you have... Like, it would be very noticeable, right, if someone was walking around with an actual helmet head. You know, like, even if you put, like, fake hair on it or something. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it would be very obvious that it's not moving. So, like, why would you do that? But she's obviously, she cleaned it up a bit, obviously, somehow, even in the middle of a fight. Or maybe somebody has cleaned it up, and then she started, diagnose, like, doing the diagnostic stuff. 
Um, but yeah, so there were some odd things I think about the, the choice, the design choices made for Edie that I'm uh, that I'm gonna get rid of, hopefully. But unfortunately, there's not, there's not a ton of options. I would like to have other options for like the 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 design, like the way that her metal looks, so the way that the pattern on her metal is, because um, I think it could look really cool if you just changed it a little bit. Um, but yeah, she's definitely an engineer. She definitely falls into the engineer class. Um, and she actually has some pretty cool abilities, but I don't take her out very often. Um, but yeah, thank you all so much for joining me. I appreciate it. Uh, really quick, I want to say thank you to my patrons. To all my patrons, but to especially Rizquito, my sapling tier patron. Thank you so much for your support. And an extra special shout out to Christopher, my tree tier patron. Thank you so, so much for your support. You're the super bestest, and I super appreciate it. So thank you all again for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.